You're listening to Radio Mayapur with the best devotional, meditation, kirtan music, and inspirational podcast. This is Radio Mayapur. Hare Krishna, we are Radio Mayapur, Lean to Your Heart, uh, traveling throughout the world with the song as Bhana Swami. Uh, today we are in Adelaide, Australia. And we are very, very fortunate to have with us Adi Purusha Das Prabhu, who is the temple president of Adelaide for many, many years. He was born in Malaysia in 1947. He studied and was living in Telek Intan. He studied medicine, he became a doctor, and uh, joined the Hare Krishna in 1986. So, Adi Purusha Prabhu, uh, please tell us what was your life before you met the devotees. Hare Krishna, Ganga Prabhu. Uh, I like to recall that I met Ganga Prabhu many years ago in Malaysia when he came with Guru Maharaj. Which year it was? That was 85 or something? Must be about 88, 89, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. it's after my... So anyway, uh, I come from a semi-Orthodox family, which means... Hindu, Hindu family. A Hindu family, but yes. uh, I'm South Indian origin. I'm Tamil by origin. Okay. So we have, of course, Deva worship and all that. But then again, we, you know, vegetarian for a few days. <laughs> In my house, it was Friday and Tuesday. Okay. Otherwise, everything goes. <laughs> so that kind of a thing. So, but still, I had strong faith in in religion. But uh, in my town, there used to be a Kartikeya festival. It's mm. called Chitra Pavanami. In South India, people will know this festival. And here, and I was always mesmerized by the festival. So as a doctor, then I wanted to see how these things are being done. And I went to the riverside where they, they prepare get themselves, to, prepare themselves, get to These are the people who put nail through their tongue. That's right. They, they put they, hook in the back, yeah, they okay. carry all kinds. Oh. It's weird. I never understood this uh, <laughs> philosophy or this uh, type of stunts or uh, but they look like they're not suffering, they're not painful. I don't know what they do. They put some ashes, I don't know. You can tell us. So, but the point is, but before they actually get into the trance, I saw them drinking so much of alcohol. Oh. And also they were smoking cigars and... and uh, so, I, for me, it did not make sense. I thought uh, what I was told was that Lord Muruga descends on them. Mm. But I'm only seeing alcohol descending into them. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, I was actually, when I saw all this, when, when as a small kid, I have not seen it. As an adult, when I saw that with my medical mind, I, I detested it. And I, I thought, no, no, this, this is cheating. Fake, Some cheating fake. is going on here. Yeah. So I agree about it. Then the other thing that happened in my life was that there were a lot of young people, Indians, Tamils, who were in the plantation industry. They used to come, men and girls, boys and girls. Mm. Because of love failure, taking taking insecticide to kill themselves. Oh my God! So you will come in the emergency. You see, practically every day, Indian young Indians being brought to the emergency, almost dying. Love story gone wrong. Because of love story, but the, the gone wrong here. Actually, initially I didn't understand. <laughs> it's because of different caste. Oh, okay. The so caste, they could not marry the person they, they love because the parents the would, parents would not agree. The parents, but though actually look at them sociologically, they are socially they are similar in just working people, working class people. Yeah. But it was so intense, they wanted to kill themselves. Dang. And then when they are brought <clears throat> in time, all we need to do is an antidote. So when I shoot the antidote and the patient comes alive, but if it is too late, then they are dead. Yeah, because already it's gone through the blood and all stuff. So I was thinking, you know, what is God doing anything about this? If I don't shoot, then the Dying. patient dies. And if I shoot, the patient lives. Am I God? <laughs> <coughs> My responsible for giving life. So that way I lost faith in our beliefs and a few other things too. But these are the two most important things that happened in my life. So I said, no, I don't think so. That is God. And I became... Means there is nobody in control of this material yeah. nature. How is possible that I can put an injection, the guy live, I don't put the guy dies, so it's my 
I am uh, <laughs> having the power of life and death, like that, you were thinking. That's right. And I became an atheist for a short while, okay. for six months, I would okay. say. Okay. And then as a student, I used to read uh, the story of my experiments with truth by Mahatma Gandhi. Okay. And because there are other turmoils going on in my mind, I thought I would read the book again. And when I turned the pages and when Mahatma Gandhi, I don't know which chapter, but it talks about religion or something. And he was saying, Gandhi was saying that how you should read the Bible, uh, sorry, the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, yeah. And, and he also says that Sir Edward, uh, Sir, um, even Sir Arnold, Sir Edwin Arnold, that's right. Sir Edwin Arnold, he says, you should read the Bhagavad Gita by this person. He mm -hmm. was the first okay. to okay. translate into English and all that. Those right. things. So I was fascinated that Mahatma Gandhi was my hero then. And he says, read the Bhagavad Gita. So I was looking for the Bhagavad Gita. You won't believe it. I searched high and low for months and I couldn't get a book. Even though there is Hindu libraries in my yeah, town, yeah, 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 yeah. they have all kinds of stories, but there was no Bhagavad Gita. Oh, Bhagavad Gita. Finally, I got a Bhagavad Gita from the uh, impersonal school, Chit Bhavananda's Bhagavad Gita. Mm. And I started reading it. And I was stunned because uh, there was a complete different concept of the whole religion. Like and God that, is impersonal, you and God are one, one and this and that. Yeah. It's all this strange philosophy. But even then, even though it's imp all that is true, but still Krishna was established as the supreme. You could be, oh. because those who pray to me come to me and those right, who pray right. to go. That's and, what Krishna said. <laughs> so all those verses are there. And I knew that. Uh, so this was around, uh, this is on my own search, in my own search. Right. And I, I thought, yeah, that, but I couldn't expect accept everything in the Gita. Of course. Then, well, that was around 1981 or so, then I started meeting devotees because the devotees had some relationship with my mother who was a vegetarian. They, when they come to my town, they'll stay at home and cook and all that. Nice. So that way, then I got to touch with devotees. And then, uh, of course, the early devotees, of course, uh, they were foreigner, right? Bhakti right. Mm. Foreigners, devotees. Foreigners. The first devotees that I met was Ram Sharan Prabhu, and he's in UK. Right. And Janaki Mataji, his wife. Right. They all still are, they all are still in UK. Yes. This is all in the 1980s when they, they were preaching all over Malaysia. Right. And then, of course, Bhakti Rajinder Maharaj and Jananda Maharaj and Prabhavishnu Prabhu. Yes. So they were the early pioneers. Right. And then right. our local brahmacharis like Singeshra Prabhu and, yes. and, all and Loka Swami and all they started. So I was, so with the association, I used to love the devotees because they, you know, I sort of gave up, gave my heart to Krishna. And oh, these are Krishna devotees, so I must take care of them like that. And they give you some book as well. Oh, when we started. And initially, of course, I, when I read Prabhupada's books, I thought, oh, this is too heavy, you know. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, how can you call everybody fools and rascals? <laughs> this man doesn't know how to preach. <laughs> right, right. I thought like that. He was too heavy. Yes. But, to after digest. Some, but after some time, then you realize actually you're a fool and rascal because because you, you don't, you're denying yes, God. Yes. That was my journey. And the best part was in 1986, it was a, a chance meeting with His Holiness Jayap Thakaswami. They were traveling from Kuala Lumpur, which is south, and they're going up to North Penang, which most of you will know. Yes, yes. And then they had to pass through my place. Though my place is actually out of the way, they wanted a, some kind of a lunch break. Right. So they came to my house and first time, I've never heard of Guru Maharaj. First time I saw him and big, burly, and I said, who's this man? And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my chance meeting with uh, His Holiness Jap Swami, and my whole life changed. In uh, 1987, I organized the first Radhayatra in Tilakintan, my town. Nice. I was not following any principles. It's all fascination for devotees and fascination for Jagannathan. Just, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. I said, I have to bring this festival to my town, Good. like that, you know. So, I think also that because you were a seeker of the truth, you were trying to read the Bhagavad Gita, but, you know, you, you got maybe the wrong book in the beginning, but whatever. Mm -hmm. But because I think the Lord knows when each soul is coming to the point to, you know, 
to want to know more about him. Then he's making the opportunity to meet the devotees and everybody's life change. So that's... But you were a doctor for many years also. Yes. Tell, us, tell us, you practice in Malaysia and... Yeah, though after my training in India, I came to Malaysia and I was posted in different uh, parts of the country. What type so, of doctor? You're a general doctor? I'm, I'm a general doctor, yes. General doctor. And so I was working in the hospitals mm. and these experiences in the hospitals. And much later, I, I started my own private practice on my own. Uh, but religion has, has always been my interest. And when the doubts came, nobody could give me answer, any proper yes, answer. Yes, yes, yes. And then the Gita, of course, gave so many answers, which initially I could not understand. It took some time. Of course, the whole thing cleared up when I first met Guru Maharaj and, and the devotees, of course, and so many of them, Baru Maharaj, and everybody was yes, yes, visiting yes. in regularly. And it was growing in Malaysia. But you think as a doctor, because you see many people dying, so you think, okay, now what was the difference between the, this dead body, a live body, and what is the soul? You can see it. What's the story? Right? Yeah. That's an advantage, actually, you, because when you talk about birth, age, disease, death, we always say birth, yeah. age, disease. And as a doctor, you see that. You see birth, you see yeah. age, you see disease, you see death all the time. That's on your job. Practical, on a practical level and every day. So it's an advantage, it may be a disadvantage also. For some people, you'll think <laughs> that all oh, this religion is all just a waste of time. But for me, uh, it made a lot of sense. Well, let me tell you, because I grew up in Italy, in the West. In, in Italy or in the West, you don't see any time dead body unless there is some accident, <laughs> but they cover it with a white sheet. So you never see people dying. So, you know, death is something far away. You never see anybody dying. <laughs> And of course, sometimes your grandfather die, you're going to see that he's in the bed, but he's gone. Everybody says, gone, it's gone, it's gone. So, but, mm. so you are like puzzled, okay, what's the missing portion inside the body? What is the soul? We don't understand. And this has been uh, obscure from the regular Western society to see old age people there somewhere, or they live with their relatives, mm. or otherwise they are in in some, you know, kind of institution where they take care of them. So you are like, uh, you know, when you come to India, I came to India in 1977, and then we went to Benares, and you see burning the body, and you say, what? <laughs> <laughs> what a shock, you know? And, and, then, and then you think, okay, I'm going to end up like this on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a lot of realization, and... Uh, yeah, but as a doctor, I'm sure you have a lot of realization because you see a lot of suffering and people. So, but when you decide to come to Australia? That was, uh, <coughs> my children came to study. I have a son and, uh, and a daughter and both of them also the initiated nice. by Guru Maharaj. So my son uh, came first and then followed by my daughter. They were both studying here. Oh, okay. And after studying, completing their studies, they they did not want to come back to Malaysia. Of course. And uh, they said, no, we want to stay here. Then I said, oh, now what we are going to do, you know, we are going, we'll be here, you'll be Alone. there. <laughs> Alone. So they encouraged us, says, why don't you come, come. to Australia? Nice. I, that was not part of the plan at all. I was not thinking of, I was just thinking of concentrating in yeah. hometown. Then that thing started, and then uh, so finally we made the big move. So we came to Australia. In which we, year it was? We when came? came around 2004. Oh, we came to 2003, right. actually. 2003. More than we, 20 years. Mm. And, and and the first time in Melbourne when I met Guru Maharaj, he, took, he gave me certain things to do. Okay. And he wanted me to organize certain things. And that time I was not working here. I actually given up. I didn't want to work anymore. You were retired. Retired. Yeah. That then what happened was certain circumstances. Then uh, I thought if I can work, I can you know also get some money for for preaching Whatever, purposes yes. and keep me occupied and all that. So anyway, <clears throat> then what happened was uh, we had to sit for the Australian Medical Council exam. We passed the exam. And because we, they don't recognize the Indian... No, no they're very strict they, here. They're very strict. So we you had to do another exam. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which you were prepared for? Yeah, I mean, no, no I would not, I, not, not really, but you know, when necessity is the mother is, of invention, yeah, correct. you know, you have to do it, you have to do it. 
So we, but my wife is also a doctor, Lokanandini. Right. So right. we both did it together and then started working for a while. And while we were doing that in Melbourne, we, we were actively involved in the services there. And then one day uh, they called me and said that there is some uh, issues in Adelaide. That time I was in Melbourne. Right. There's some issues in Adelaide and uh, would you like to go and help out? Uh, and so I, I said, yeah, if you want me to do, then we can give it a go. Try. So we came here. The temple was uh, having a lot of debts at the time. It was about eight hundred thousand dollars. How much? Eight hundred thousand. Whoa! And uh, the whole place was, uh, you know, a bit of a mess. And uh, so we sorted all that out. Now, of course, you can see we've got a extension, yeah, yeah. new big it's building beautiful. coming up and all that. Tell yeah. us, tell us about the extension because uh, I'm sure this is because the people who come mm-hmm. here, there is small space when you have festival. Mm-hmm. And I saw the extension you've done, which is very nice. It will be ready by next year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so the congregation loves this temple because you have also prasadam for them, going to the restaurant and many preaching opportunities to people, mostly Indian, who are living around here. There's some Australian also as well, but mostly Indian, you know, when they are outside of their country, they get lost, kind mm. of, you know, kind of what. <laughs> they want to uh, maintain their identity, mm. but if they're fortunate, they come to our temple and then you mm. connect them to the Lord. So tell us about this extension. Uh, so before that, the biggest attraction in the temple is Father Shamsundar, of course. This most ladies. beautiful form, and many people have commented, go, go in the Maharaj, when he was here, he spent some time here. Mm. He loved the deity so much that he made a replica of this deities back in Gadagiri, mm. the same thing, the exact size. Mm. And uh, Indra Dimna Maharaj also has commented on the beauties of this uh, thing, yes. my Guru Maharaj, and so many people. Yes. Uh, um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Swami. Bhakti Siddhanta Swami. Bhakti Siddhanta Swami. Swami. Yes, Swami. Yes, yes, he, yes. He, oh, he loves this devout deities here so much. So anybody who comes here, takes a look at the deities, they are very fascinated and they always keep coming back. Okay. So this place, now I'll come to the extension. This temple actually was formerly, formerly, this whole place is the Roman Catholic area. Right, yeah, there's Saint, many churches. Ch- the the mm-hmm. St. Bridget's Church. Right, right. And the, the nuns are staying, opposite houses, they are nuns are staying there. At one time, this is a place for the nuns. Oh. So there's a chapel where the, where our temple hall is, that's a chapel. That's a chapel, yes. And the, where the restaurant is, their card room. Where right. the present restaurant is, is their right, card right, room. Right, 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 right. And all the rooms, you see, like, like pigeonholes upstairs. Yeah. All of them, the nuns. Even was... this room where I'm staying, there's a box there. You can see, and uh, Mara said that they used to keep their rosary for <laughs> their prayers. We have similar type of uh, mm-hmm. monastery in Italy also. When oh. we go and visit many ancient monasteries, same room like this, one table, one chair, you know, and a small box. And people, they go every day to the service, whether they were priests or they were nuns, you mm-hmm. know, the business. This, uh, because this uh, was a life of austerity for them, living separate from society and being provided with all the facility for them to be spiritual. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, unfortunately, there is not many people who want to become priests or nuns. Yeah. In Italy, especially, we have most of the priests, they are all from outside Spain, France, America. <laughs> there is no Italian priest anymore. <laughs> okay. Because I don't know why. I guess, uh, you know, there is not much spirituality. Uh, although they have a school there for uh, becoming a priest. But I guess it's difficult for people to choose this life unless they can feel in their heart mm-hmm. a great pleasure and attraction for serving the Lord. Mm-hmm. But many of them are sincere. The difficulty with the, with the, you know, Catholic church is that they eat meat, they drink wine, they smoke cigarettes. So how difficult it is for them to control their senses. We are following the four regular principles as devotees, and we find difficulty in remaining fixed in devotional service, controlling the mind and senses. But for them, it's even more difficult. Mm, so. But tell us what was the most wonderful time in serving here as a temple president and what were the challenges for you? 
The initial change, like I said, was the, the heavy uh, financial burden. Yes. And then, uh, so we, and firstly, it was thoroughly disorganized. So things were not moving. So we had to regulate everything and yes. bring in young, young pujaris. And, everything. Yeah, yeah. And when we started improving everything, like a regular temple, yeah. then people started, started coming. coming. And yeah. our Sunday feasts are very popular. So more, more people started. How uh, many people come for Sunday feasts? Well, now you get about 300 people. Nice, you know? nice. And when initially, when we first started, maybe 70, 80 people like that. Right. You know? So, and uh, during uh, like uh, Janmastami and all that, the queues go for two, three blocks. Sure. And, and then usually it's come. winter, you know, winter raining yeah, yeah, and yeah. so people have to dis- still, and we, still yeah, come. We, though we put a lot of tents to accommodate them, but still the crowd is too much. So uh, in view of all that, then uh, we decided that uh, we have to, because the chapel hall, it's the temple small, was too yeah, small. Yeah. And so now we have a, with the new building that we're building is about four times the present hall. So you can larger. accommodate a few hundred people. Yeah, easily. easily. So that, you know, in case of the, you know, the weather is bad or something, we can just shove them inside the temple hall itself. Nice. Or otherwise, nice. but we, you know, we have. So then we launched on this and uh, of course we settled all these uh, previous problems. Then I bought the house next door. Hmm. Oh, next yeah, door, yeah. we bought the house. Some devotees staying. Some devotees are staying there. And then what's happening is now our devotees are buying up houses around here. Nice. So many houses they have been bought. They want to be near the temple. Near the near temple. The so, uh, so that is happening. And one clear advantage we have is because it's zoned under religion. Yes. So because nobody in church, nobody can yeah, say anything. Is, so religious practice. So we are not disturbed. So we don't have that problem. Even if you have a problem, it's very minimal. Uh, people parking the cars wrongly yeah, and yes. stuff like that. Otherwise, you are allowed to practice religion here. No problem. Nice, beautiful. So then, what is happening is uh, now it is a necessity. You know, it's because of the crowds are increasing, and of course, Indian migration is also increasing. And uh, uh, so, the challenges, uh, other than that, big challenges means uh, because we we are dependent on and pujaris from India. Mm, yes. You know, so though we are initiating, second initiating and all that, the altar service and all that, but still to do some massive cooking, so what is also doing, Yes. Uh, some other responsibilities. So, and so visa is a problem, not like those days, it was easy. Now they, they're putting... Uh, we don't have a special visa for religious, uh, they like a church. The, we have, but two years plus two years. That's know, all. It's a temporary visa. Oh, I see. So that is the problem. And but it's okay. We can. Uh, we're still doing it. Maybe. And more yes. and more volunteers are coming in and doing a lot of uh, things. Yes. Yeah. So uh, so festivals. Unfortunately, you won't be here. Otherwise, for God Purnima. Yeah. God Purnima, yeah. you can yeah. see the crowds. You know. And yeah. A lot Purnima. of volunteers. <laughs> you know. So nice. So we we have come a long uh, a long, a long way. way, and uh, in fact, I remember uh, many years ago, one Janmashtami, I went and invited all the Hindu temples in Adelaide to come for a program. How many temples are there? They have very small ones and one large one. The Ganesh temple is the big temple. Others are all there's some just Shiva temple, some Ganesh, some, some uh, Balaji is temple is there, Balaji temple. They are all small, but the uh, BAPs, what you call Swami Narayan, oh, Swami Narayan, they have two, which is also quite fairly large. Uh, but um, but the anyway, when we invited for Janmashtami, they all came. Then there was nobody celebrating Janmashtami. Oh, it's gone. So the whole town will come to our temple for Janmashtami. <laughs> and these people came and they saw the crowds, Ganesh temple and all that. They saw the crowds. Said, wow. Said, we can do this? If these people can put Krishna and make some money, why don't we make some money? <laughs> so they, they started. Think about business. <laughs> <laughs> Not so the they started Janmashtami. And the first year after that, there was a drop in our crowd. Oh, and then I said, what happened? Suddenly, you know, then yeah, you tell you, oh, they're all, everywhere. everybody is celebrating now, <laughs> Janmashtami. <laughs> now, what happened is, though with all that happened, but we have a program that goes on from five o'clock to past midnight. And, you know, this 
feast before, feast after, and stage show. Yeah, we got the whole works. Of course. They don't know. They they just decorate the deities. Yes. That's all they get. They just keep yeah. some deities we and do the baja, We do the kirtan. We That's give right. The we got everything. Full package. Full package. So what has happened now is they know that yeah, others may have a show, but the big show is in Iskon. Of course. So now they you still get the big crowds as usual. Mm-hmm. And maybe after coming here, they might go. You know that uh, may happen, but. Uh, we have the crowds with us. Nice. But you have a future expansion project like uh, after 10 years, maybe we need a bigger temple. I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I'm just asking out think, of curiosity. Yeah, it is possible, but our immediate thing is like, you know, to do some, ex- this you know, if we can, yes. you know, the next, we can do an extension there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, but here in this country, you can uh, actually have farms. Oh, okay. If you have, it's easier to get a, you know, like 10 acres, 100 acres, or 50 acres. It's Build a big pavilion, so have a festival so, there. Yeah, we can have a, something like that, not too far away in the hills or something. Nice. Uh, that'll be good. Then we don't have to worry about so many things, you know. Because there's naturally. plenty of land available. Yeah, plenty yeah. of land is available. Australia and, uh, is a big country. Just go a little bit, say 10 kilometers out of the city, it's not very expensive, sure. you know. So yeah. uh, that is... So we're having some ideas like okay. that because the city is con- con- so this will still remain. Of course, of course. But we have to do something in the long nice, term. Nice, nice. That's yeah. a nice project. So apart from this challenge, what was your most wonderful time you had here in uh, in Adelaide while you were serving for so many years? Now uh, tell us some of the people you met or some of the beautiful things uh, you had. Really uh, give pleasure to your heart. <laughs> now, talking about challenges, I must talk about this one sure. uh, because this is in Malaysia. Okay, that was a bigger challenge. I'll finish with the bigger challenge in Malaysia sure. and come to this sure. challenge as you wish. And uh, Guru Maharaj is to come every year for our Radhayatra. And yes. then one day, once one Guru, one Radhayatra, when when we were traveling, he showed me in the car. He showed me you should buy land here. This is in Telukintan in Malaysia. Mm. I looked at the place where he showed the land. I said, because we're hardly anybody. We're not even yeah. two, three people. We're organizing Radha Yatra, <laughs> but nobody there. Right. And there is no funds, no money, nothing. And I am looking, you know, this place will cost few, I mean, I'm talking about bring it Malaysia at that time. That time. 80s. Few hundred thousand, where will, where we'll is the money? Where the money I from? Nothing, you know. And I was thinking, no, this is not going to happen. But I didn't say anything. Maharaj, this Guru Maharaj, this is very expensive and all that. <laughs> he didn't say anything. Then later, I bought a land. No, bought a land, smaller, cheaper and all that. Different place. So, but when he submitted plans and all, it was rejected. Because the, you know, Malaysia is a very, um, it's like a Muslim government. Yes. So, they're very, very strict about anything you do, like uh, temples and all that. So, they, yeah. was, and the, the diagram I had was like Naudip style with nine domes and all that. Wow. So, it's rejected. And uh, so, finally, we sold the land. And uh, then we bought the land. There suddenly this happened. All, I don't know how it happened. Somebody came and told me that, there's that land, land that same, that's where Guru Maharaj showed, showed direction, said, you must land. buy here. Wow. That same land came to us, and one and a half acres, and it was 500,000, but still, by then, we, we our congregation, to, uh, and grow. we already had funds. And so, we, and then we sold that land, we sold for a profit, and then we bought that, you know, one and a half acre land. <laughs> Though we bought the land, and then now the building construction was a big problem, I tried so many ways seeing ministers, what not, trying to get the approval. So finally what we did was we built a big massive mansion, like a house, saying that it's our a house. house. And then when everything was approved, then we just modified it. And and we had the, you know, that was in the, it's around the year 2000 or 2001 when the massive uh, to, uh, opening. So that was a big challenge and uh, this constant battle with the government. Yes. And uh, you know, finally, we somehow just sneaked our way through. And <laughs> so we put, uh, we have deities, the Gornithai deities. Oh, Shri nice. Shri Dayal Nithai Gaurang Hari. That is Your Guru Maharaj <laughs> named the them. Name. <laughs> and so they are there very nicely. Prabhupada actually had come to my town. 
There are four places he visited in Malaysia, and one is my town. My town is a very obscure town. Out of, but proper that come there and oh. stayed one night. Nice. So some we we knew something will happen here. We just have to be patient, and something did happen. So that was Malaysia. Here, uh, the thing was initially there was no proper preaching. Uh, you know, the thing was not going. So the preaching wasn't there. Uh, the festivals were poorly organized. Um, the, there was acute shortage of funds. No funds because. Yeah, the thing was broke. The big death. When we were, we were having some function, suddenly the electricity board came and cut off, cut off the electricity. <laughs> oh my I God. said, what's happening? He said, <laughs> didn't, didn't pay bill. So, oh it was, we were at that, that level at that time. So, and I was working. I was pumping uh, by God, Krishna's whatever. mercy. I was allowed to work and, and give some money and all that. But everything changed. And uh, in, within about three years, there was order. Everything was everything was being done properly, and the crowd started increasing. From you know more and more people, and people started appreciating and like that. And then the challenge was, of course, too much people. Even like a, like a Sunday feast, for instance, you know they can't get into the hall. So everybody's the halls are packed. Outside is packed. They Not can't the get in to see the deities. So so then. We had to think of something bigger, yes. and that's why this plan extension. to put up this nice. extension, yes. Beautiful. With blessings from Guru Maharaj. When I got the plans, we took it to Mayapur and gave it to Guru Maharaj and showed so it. So we to can him. say then your course of your life, your faith in the Lord increased because the same man proposed, God disposed. <laughs> So we have a plan, plan A, B, C, D, and the Guru Mahal tell you to do something, and Prabhupada was there. How everything, certain point, manifests. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. So then your faith in your heart is now firmly fixed that whatever has to happen will happen by the blessing of the Lord, and we are just His servant, and we are just trying to do our level best. We, 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 so that's we don't wonderful. understand God because of ignorance, but you know, yes. association, devotee, is devotion yeah. is the biggest thing for me, especially Guru Maharaj, you know, how, and, uh, he, how completely we have uh, lost ourselves in his hands, you know, that, uh, wow. that is amazing, yes, that is a, one spiritual journey from one end to another end, and, and, uh, and subsequently, I was the first to start uh, doing this, and then I, my first student was my wife. <laughs> and then I started preaching to my sisters and brothers and all that. Nice. And they all became devotees. And then uh, my parents, of course, my parents was difficult. My mother was easy. Mother was, she was a vegetarian long, long time. And pious woman. She was yeah, very pious and she used to cook for all the sannyasi, subhak, name so it, much. Bhakti Vrindavan. So many of Bhakti Vrindavan Maharaj would love to come in, you know, because she would cook the, the Sri Lankan <laughs> Tamil style, she would cook. Nice. So, <laughs> and uh, so Bhakti Chara Swami, nice. and all that, everybody used to come in. So she was, my father was uh, uh, very, he's not, uh, he's a very staunch Hindu, uh, but he, he will say everything's one same, every, you know, that way. Then I had to tell him, no, no, the scriptures are saying differently. Chatamatta tupat, whatever way you go, you go to bed to God, at whatever way you take. So from early, my my father was a prominent person in town, so whenever sannyasis come, they will come to my house. So we were all influenced like that, and he was influenced like that. Naturally. He had a he had a sannyasi friend. Some, it, uh, only people in Malaysia might know Satyananda, Swami Satyananda. There is a, a pure life society in Kuala Lumpur, mm. the orphanage. And oh, my okay. father used to, used to donate a lot of money help. for the, yeah. for the children. Oh, nice art. Yeah, so, good. So he was influenced by so many of these uh, nice. Mayavadi sannyasis. And so, and then finally, they, they all both got initiated. Nice. I said, you must chant, and they met. Of course, the Guru Maharaj was the key figure. They, Very they, attractive They person. were so, at, you know, the Charismatic person. Yeah, they were. <laughs> and of so, course, you as a becoming devotee, you, they say, 21 generation before and after, you are <laughs> the person who introduced everybody to Krishna consciousness. Also, they all have opportunity to associate with the body and do devotional service. 
So that's a great responsibility. Right now, there are, we have four grandchildren. Uh, nice, it's a pity, yes. but you know, all of them can read the Bhagavad Gita. This, I should tell them. I only got the book when I was almost 40 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, so and I want you, like you all, they, I mean, my eldest grandson is about 10, 12 years. You give him a Bhagavad Gita, he can read, he can sit and give a class. If you tell him something, he say, no, no, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I say, I know, I know this. <laughs> so, so, so nice. that way I think they are fortunate because the, the, we have to give the spiritual knowledge, it's just not Absolutely. material knowledge. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's wasted. Everything is wasted. <coughs> so, so that is wonderful. Any other things you'd like to share with a listener of Radio Mayapur? Or is there a message you'd like to give to them? The message is, actually, the Leech Spot Prabhupada said that the whole world is suffering and, you know, Krishna consciousness can actually save them. Yes. And we, devotees, should understand the importance of this and should cooperate more and not do the slightest thing, you know, find faults with each other and all that. And uh, and we are, because we are missing the larger picture of, deli- you know, giving this knowledge to others. Yes, we are that's very important. Otherwise, you'll be over small bi- things, we'll be bickering over small things. Yeah. And forgetting our mission. Correct. Know, that is a... I think we feel sometimes, so much. Sometimes the body they do forget the mission and they get into quarrel for small things, actually. Yeah, that's right. Which are not very, you know, palatable or very important. But, uh, you know, I think everybody has to work on himself. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> Jesus say, it's very easy to see the small, uh, grass in somebody's eyes, but you don't see yeah. a big trunk in your own eyes. So it's <laughs> like it's easy to find fault with others. But, uh, you know, we should remain always humble and make and think mm. and appreciate mm. everybody, you know, because, yeah, there are different levels of devotees. Yeah. yeah. So we should appreciate everybody who is trying to serve the Lord, mm. not trying to find fault, because let's assist everybody to grow spiritually and feel comfortable to come to the temple and learn Christian consciousness. They may live outside, they study, they work, no problem. There is no restriction. So main thing is the temple is a source of spiritual enlightenment. So people can come, learn, and then their life will change and they become a better person. And they themselves can uplift so many other people. So yeah. that's how the movement will spread. And that is the desire of Lord Chaitanya. Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam, he said, this is my desire that preaching will go on all over the world. So I'm very thankful for you to come today and spend some of your valuable time with us. And please do come and visit Mayapur and spend more time with us. (laughs) And uh, tell your friend and devotees about Radio Mayapur, because it's 24 hours people can tune in their mobile while they work in the office or drive a car or they're cleaning their house. This is a platform by which people can hear 24-hour Kirtaniya Sudahari, so you can hear all the bhajan 24-hour, and all the podcasts we do with all the devotees, which is enlightening. Thank you so much once again. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank, Thank you for having me. Hare yes, Krishna. pleasure. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. You're listening to Radio Mayapur with the best devotional, meditation, kirtan music, and inspirational podcast. This is Radio Mayapur.